Hello there! So for the next 20 minutes or so, I'll be talking about efficient data structures for representation of polynomial optimization problems, and in particular, an implementation in SOS tools. So polynomial optimization problems occur quite a bit when studying nonlinear systems. For example, to test stability of this nonlinear system here, we can solve this polynomial optimization problem where we look for a positive definite Lyapunov function which decreases along solutions to the system. Now, in order to solve such polynomial optimization problems, in many cases, we will tighten these positivity constraints here to SOS constraints, where we will use sigma s here to denote the set of SOS polynomials. Now, the reason we do so, of course, is that these SOS programs or SOSPs can in fact be solved using semi-definite programming. And in particular, the process of solving an SOSP can be decomposed into two stages, namely the parsing of the SOS process, where the SOS program is converted to an associated semi-definite program, or SDP, and then the subsequent solving of this SDP. So when we talk about software used for solving SOSPs, such as SOS tools or YAMIP, what we are really referring to are SOS parsers, so software that provides interface for users to declare an SOSP, converts the SOSP to an SDP for the user, and then passes this SDP to a third-party solver such as Sudomi. Now for our purposes, uh, we will distinguish two approaches to this parsing, namely on-the-fly parsing, as done by, for example, SOS tools, where each SOS constraint is converted to an SDP constraint as soon as the user declares it, and batch parsing is done by, for example, YAMIP, where the SOSP is converted to an SDP only once the full optimization problem has been declared. Now, both approaches have their merits. Uh, the batch parsing tends to be more efficient. The on-the-fly parsing tends to be more transparent. But either way, both provide the same service, namely converting SOS programs to semi-definite programs. Now, unfortunately, although these SDP solvers are generally quite efficient, the size of our optimization problems in many cases will be quite large, uh, all involving hundreds of thousands of decision variables in our SDP. So for this reason, a lot of research has gone into trying to reduce the size of these SDPs, aiming to reduce the computation time associated with this solving of the semi-definite program. However, this does little to nothing to reduce the complexity of this parsing stage of the SOS process, despite the fact that, in many cases, this parsing will actually take more time than the solving. So, for example, uh, we ran a test where we par parsed two common SOS programs using the batch parser YAMIP and the on-the-fly parser SOS tools, and solving the resulting semi-definite program with Sudumi. And we found that in both cases, more than half of the total computation times associated to the process are actually spent on parsing the SOS program, with the remaining time being spent on solving the SDP. So this then poses a problem. Namely, we can reduce the complexity of this solving stage as much as we like, but if we can't even parse the SOS program, then we cannot hope to solve it either. So for this reason, we've been looking into reducing the complexity of this parsing stage of SOS program, trying to uh, reduce the total computation time to below 20% or perhaps 10% of the total computation time associated to SOS program. Now, in order to do so, of course, we first need to establish how this parsing is actually done, um, for which we return to our previous SOS program which we can use to test stability of this nonlinear system. So for this SOS program, we note that our decision variable is in fact a function V, namely we are optimizing over the structure of this Lyapunov function V. So we refer to this function here as a polynomial variable. That is, it's a polynomial function that acts as decision variable in our optimization program. Now this polynomial variable v here must then also satisfy this constraint stating that the negative derivative of the Lyapunov function along solutions to the system must also be an SOS polynomial which we will denote by g. Then uh, v, g and f here are all functions of these independent of these variables x here 
but these constraints here do not actually depend on the value of x. That is, they must be satisfied for all x in our domain R, so independent of the value of x. So accordingly, we refer to these variables x here as independent variables. Now that then is our SOS program. The challenge for the parser then is to convert this SOS program to an associated semi-definite program. And to this end, we first represent V and G here in this quadratic format, where for simplicity, uh, we will use monomials of just degree one in both X1 and X2. Then both V and G are parameterized by these uh, two by two matrices here, defined by these coefficients Xi. Now note now that the structure of V and G here is uniquely defined by the value of these coefficients Xi. So instead of optimizing over these functions V, as we do in our SOS program, in the semi-definite program, we will actually optimize over the values of these coefficients Xi. So these coefficients Xi here will be our decision variables. Then enforcing these positivity constraints here, we will ensure that in fact V and G satisfy these SOS constraints in our original SOS program. So this is all fairly easy. The main challenge actually comes in enforcing this equality constraint here. And in particular, this constraint has to be satisfied for all values of our independent variables x. So this then poses two challenges. First, we have to compute this gradient and this product and this sum and represent the result as a new polynomial variable h that is a function of x parameterized by xi. Then we need to convert this polynomial variable h to this format here, where we collect all the independent variables into this monomial vector zd here, such that our polynomial variable h is zero for all x, uh, for all values of our independent variables x, if and only if these coefficients here are equal to zero. So axi minus b is equal to zero. Now this then, of course, is just a linear constraint on our decision variables xi, which we can add to our SOS program, uh, semi-definite program. So then the main challenge for the SOS parser is computing uh, this polynomial variable h, and then finding the matrices a and vector b, such that we can represent h in this SDP format here. So how can we do this? And in particular, how can we numerically represent these variables g and v and this function f here in such a way that we can compute this gradient, compute this product, compute this sum and represent the results as a function of x parameterized by psi. Well, to this end, uh, current parsers actually treat the decision variables as independent variables. That is, instead of looking at for example, v here as a function of x parameterized by xi, they treat v here as a function of both x and xi. Then, since v must in fact be a polynomial function, we can represent it as a linear combination of monomials in both x and xi. So in this way, any polynomial variable can be uh, represented as a polynomial function any polynomial function here can be represented numerically by three fields, namely these variables, which will be x and xi in this case, the coefficients c defining this linear combination, and this vector of monomials zd in both our independent variables x and our decision variables xi. Now we will refer to this format here as the PVAR format or linear format, and then we can represent v, f, and g here in this format allowing us to also numerically compute the gradient, product, and sum, and represent the resulting polynomial variable h here in the PVAR format as well. However, in doing so, we note that we are mashing together our decision variables and independent variables here in this monomial vector, despite the fact that decision variables are very much not independent variables. That is, these decision variables are actually constrained by our SOS constraints and must therefore also appear linearly in our SOS program. Whereas these independent variables act more like indices to our constraints and may appear in any polynomial manner. 
Accordingly, the number of independent variables in our SOS program also tends to be quite small, on the order of one or perhaps orders of 10, whereas we may have hundreds of thousands of decision variables in our SOS program. So clearly decision variables and independent variables are very distinct and the failure to account for this uh, difference between these two types of variables in the PVAR representation is exactly why the parsing of SOS programs is taking so much time using these current parsers. For example, uh, consider the pro problem of computing this product here. Now in the PVAR representation, we can represent both the gradients and this function here in the PVAR representation and then the product of the two can be represented in the PVAR format as well, where we compute the new coefficients by taking the Kronecker product of the old coefficients and the new monomials by taking the Kronecker product of the old monomials. Now that's all relatively easy. However, we note here that the computational cost associated with performing uh, or with computing this Kronecker product here scales directly with the number of monomials in our vector Z bar. And in turn, this number of monomials scales directly with our number of decision variables. So the computational cost associated with computing this product here, and thus computing this polynomial variable H here, will scale directly with our number of decision variables. Moreover, once we have H here in the, uh, the PVAR format, we still have to convert it to the SDP format. And this is quite challenging because in the PVAR format, our decision variables and independent variables are very much mashed together in this vector Z bar. On the other hand, in the SDP format, these decision variables and independent variables have to be separated. So then in order to convert H here to the SDP format, we have to separate our decision variables and independent variables, meaning we have to convert this vector C here somehow to a matrix C, uh, separating the contribution of the decision variables and the independent variables. And of course, the computational cost associated with performing this operation also scales directly with our number of decision variables. So using the PVAR format, then uh, both the computational cost associated with computing this polynomial variable H and converting it to the SDP format here scales directly with our number of decision variables. And that's why parsing SOS programs using this PVAR format is taking so much time. Okay, so how do we solve this then? Well, we need an alternative representation of our polynomial variables where we actually separate our decision variables and independent variables. And for this, we propose to use the deep far representation. So in the deep far format, uh, a polynomial variable S here can be represented numerically by four fields, namely the decision variables Xi, the independent variables X, a matrix of coefficients C, and then a vector of monomials ZD in just the independent variables X here. Now you can clearly see the distinction between the deep var format and the PVAR format then. Namely, in the PVAR format, our decision variables and independent variables are mashed together in this monomial vector Z bar. Whereas in the deep far format, we inherently separate the decision variables and independent variables in the structure. Moreover, in the deep far formats, our decision variables will always appear linearly in the structure or affinely in the structure. And therefore we do not need to store any monomial information on these decision variables. Now note also that converting from the deep performance to the SDP format is trivial as we are already separating the decision variables and independent variables in the deep R format uh, in the same way as we would separate it for the SDP format. Now we've incorporated the deep R format into the latest version of SOS tools. So then using this new version of SOS tools 4.0, we should be able to parse SOS programs much more efficiently. And indeed, consider, for example, the operation of uh, multiplication. So once again, computing this product here. Now, representing this gradient of V and this function F here, both in the deep far format, we note that the product can also be represented in the deep far format, where once again, we take these Kronecker products uh, to compute the new coefficients and new monomials. However, in this case, 
uh, these monomials here do not include the decision variables at all. And in fact, this monomial vector that does include the decision variables is left completely untouched when we perform this operation. So then the computational cost associated with computing this product then also does not scale directly with our number of decision variables. Now we were able to numerically verify this as well. So we ran a test where we randomly generated polynomial variables S and polynomial functions P and determined the time required to compute the products here of these two. Using the different data structures, so using the DeepVar format, using the MATLAB symbolic toolbox, using the PVAR format as used in SOS Tools 3.04, and using YALMIP's inherent data structure. Now we found then that as we increase the number of decision variables here to a million, so the number of decision variables in our polynomial variable S here, then the uh, computation time associated with performing this product increases only marginally using the DeepVAR representation whereas it increases much more substantially using the uh, PVAR format in YALNA. And in fact, using the MATLAB symbolic toolbox, we find that we run into memory issues before even reaching 100,000 decision variables. Now, similarly, consider the operation of differentiation. So computing, for example, this gradient here. We note that in an SOS program, we will never compute a derivative with respect to the decision variables xi only with respect to the independent variables. And so performing a derivative with respect to a decision, an independent variable, we note that once again, our monomial vector in the decision variables is left completely untouched. And so the, the computational cost associated to computing this derivative will also not scale directly with our number of decision variables. Now we numerically verified this as well. So we randomly generated polynomial variables and then performed differentiation, substitution, and integration with respect to some independent variables. And we find then that as we increase the number of decision variables to 1 million, the computational time associated to each operation increases only marginally using the deep far representation, uh, which cannot be said using these other representations. So then using the deep far format, we should be able to parse SOS programs much more efficiently. And indeed, uh, as noted, we've incorporated this deep far format into SOS tools 4.0. And using this latest version of SOS tools, we can parse common SOS programs uh, much quicker than using uh, these other data structures. In particular, we ran three uh, numerical examples. So first, we performed a greatest lower bound test. So we look for a greatest lower bound gamma here on a function f on the main g defined by these functions g here. Now the details here are not really important. What's important to note is we can represent this problem here as an SOS program where we have these polynomial variables s1 through s3. And we define these polynomial variables here using monomials of a particular degree d. Then uh, we, uh, we determine the time required to parse this SOS program uh, as we increase the monomial degree D here in these polynomial variables using the different data structures as noted before. And we find that parsing the problem using SOS tools 4.0 with the deep far format, uh, the computation time associated to the parsing increases relatively little compared to even the batch parser YALMAP, and especially compared to using the SIMS format or the PVAR format in SOS tools. Where in fact, uh, using these two formats, we note that we run into memory issues before even reaching a monomial degree of 15. Now, more importantly, perhaps, we note that the relative time spent on parsing is below 20% uh, for these larger values of the monomial degrees when using the deep far representation. Whereas using YALMIP, uh, this relative time tends to be quite large. And as noted, using SIMS or PVAR, we run into memory issues, which is why these bars here are transparent. Now, as a second test, we parsed a robust stability SOS program, in particular a robust stability for a linear ordinary differential equation here, yielding this SOS program. 
And we parse this program uh, increasing the, si the size of a problem, so the number of state variables here. And as we increase this number of state variables, the computation time associated with parsing the SOS program increases relatively little using the deep file representation compared to these other data structures, where with the SIMS representation and PVAR format, we once again run into memory issues. More importantly, the relative time spent on parsing is well below 10% uh, for these larger numbers of state variables. And in fact, it's below 1% in many of these cases. Whereas uh, the SIMS and PVAR format run into memory issues again, and YALMI also has a much larger uh, relative parsing time. Finally, we consider a more complicated problem, namely a local stability of this uh, van der Poel oscillator here, where we parsed this problem also as we increased the number of state variables. And we find that in this case too, uh, or in this case, as our number of state variables increases, uh, the deep far format performs uh, similar to the batch parser YALMIF, uh, right up to the point where both run into memory issues as our number of state variables increases to 14. And the relative time spent on parsing is also, once again, well below our benchmark, even below 1% for these larger numbers of state variables. So clearly then, using the deep far format, we can parse SOS programs much more efficiently. Now, as noted, we've incorporated the deep far format into the latest version of SOS tools, which is freely available online and actually allows us to parse these large-scale SOS programs. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention.